Greetings everyone, welcome to Facebook Live. Just so excited to be here with you, just studying God's Word, worshiping with the Calvary Maranatha classic songs, and just invite you to come on in and uh, sit on the couch, so to speak. Uh, you're inside the room right now, so just relax and bring forth uh, the peace of Christ into your life through the Word of God and the teaching. And I know you work hard and you just uh, do so much and God wants to give you rest. So come on in, put your feet up and let's study God's word together and uh, invite a friend and feel free to post on those comments down there. That's a pretty cool little feature and uh, you can just say what you want to say and, and again post your, your praise reports and um, anything that's on your heart that you want to pray about. You know, we really have a really cool group of people uh, here uh, with the Facebook Live, and they're just prayer warriors. They would love to pray for your situation and to encourage you. So let's pray right now. Father, we just, Lord, thank you so much for this time. It's a privilege to gather together. And Lord, you said in your word where two or three are gathered, you are there in our midst. And if we agree on anything, it shall be done. And Lord, we stand in agreement together as the body of Christ, and we are asking, Lord, that you would just be right there for each and every one of us. Jehovah Shema, the Lord who is there. And you said, Lord, you would never leave us nor forsake us. I pray everyone right now would just sense God's love, God's grace upon their life. They would be drawn by your Holy Spirit and whatever they need, Lord God, that you would provide that for them, the comfort the mercy, the forgiveness, the grace, and the assurance, Lord, all that they need to just, Lord, be secure in your love. And we thank you that we can be because Christ died for us and has given us eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for how much you love us. May your love be manifested to each and every one of us. And may we be changed people because of the time we spent together. We ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, well, let's just worship the Lord. Let's sing Arms of Love. I sing a simple song of love my Savior, to my Jesus, I'm grateful for the things you've done, my loving Savior, oh precious Jesus, my heart is glad that you've called me your own.
simple song of love Jesus and in his arms. Wow. Well, let's do As the Deer Pants for the Water Brooks. You know, um, this was a psalm I read this morning. I was just sitting outside before church with my coffee and my Bible. I just happened to be in Psalm uh, 42 is where this is from. It's such a great psalm. Let's sing together. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to
Let's sing, We Are One in the Spirit. Our Bible study here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 has a lot about unity in the body of Christ. Let's not be divided. We are one. jump into that theme tonight in God's Word. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 17. The theme is how to get along with people. Does that sound like a good one or what? How to get along with people. And uh, I'm looking at the comments down here with uh, Donna. She's greeting. She's saying, hi, Pastor Louie. And then she's saying great songs. I know I felt that too um, tonight. Uh, during this time, Donna, the Spirit of the Lord through these wonderful songs. Praise the Lord. Love the new songs, you know, but just love the old ones too. Well, we're going to just go right into prayer once again. Father, we do want to pray for our unity. Lord, we want to pray also for every need tonight in the house. Lord, whatever is going on, Lord, in our hearts and lives as people, are uh, just watching, Lord, coming in, uh, you know, the doors open, walking into the living room here, sitting down, and just sensing your spirit, Father. We just pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, would touch and meet every single need in the house, Lord. We thank you so much. We pray for Israel. We pray for protection over Israel at this time, Lord God. We pray for our own country. We ask, Lord, for repentance. We ask, Lord, that through this, uh, with Christ as our one head, there would be unity in our land for such a divided nation as America. Lord, thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, in our families. We pray for those, Lord, who aren't feeling well, those who are sick. We pray, Lord, for strength for each and every one and healing. And we ask, Lord, your richest blessings upon our uh, pastors and leaders. Uh, we just are so thankful, Lord. For them, 
the churches that we go to, and uh, the wonderful body of Christ that is there. Lord, we also pray that we would, uh, as we just sang about, spread the gospel in our land. As you've placed us strategically, Lord, where we live, what block we're on, where we go to the grocery store, and all our routines and things that we do, Lord, we're all out there. We're burning some gallons of gas, Lord, as we go throughout the week and do all of our to-dos. Father, we just pray that we'll be a blessing to everyone we meet, as well as anything we can do for you by posting and encouraging people on social media or whatever it might be, Lord, texting someone, letting them know that the Lord is with them, giving them an encouraging scripture. We thank you for these things that we can do, Lord God. We pray that you lift up anyone, Lord, that is depressed. Lord, we ask, Lord, that they would just start feeling better and that you would just lift that cloud from their shoulders. We pray in Jesus' name, Lord God. Whatever burdens might be there, concerns for family and concerns for uh, the future, whatever it might be, Lord, you've gotten us through so many scrapes in life and we just thank you, Lord, for for that, and we just praise you that you are so good. What you've done before, we know you will do again. As we learned recently, last week, Lord, how you will confirm us to the end. You will hold us, Lord. You will make sure that we're going to get all the way to the end and stand before your presence with exceeding joy. So, Lord, bless your word now, we pray, and just, Lord, speak to our hearts. We ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, well, grab your Bibles, and we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 through 17. <coughs> the theme, again, is how to get along with people. Wow, so important. Paul starts out in verse 10. Now I plead with you, brethren. I love that. So right away, he's talking about, um, you know, how we are brothers and sisters in Christ. It's very common, and uh, sometimes we feel closer to our spiritual family, or what we call our God family, than we do with our own uh, blood uh, family. And it's interesting, there's, there's so many hurts in life through, through uh, you know, our families and through uh, our friends and, and all, but we're just so grateful that we have the beautiful family of Christ. And so this is what Paul's talking about. You know, he's going to be leading into the divisions that are going on there in the Corinthian church. But now he says, I plead with you, brethren. So I plead with you. It's not something just a light case, but it's something that is serious, you know, that we all get along. Amen. And we have that unity. Uh, and, you know, he's up until this point, he has um, been really kind to them. He's given, you know, nine verses of introduction but now he's uh, launching into his discussion of their sins, dealing first with a matter of church divisions that are amongst them. And so this is really good. And this is what Christ did <coughs> excuse me, to the seven churches in Asia that we find in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. He, for the most part, commended the seven churches before he... Uh, talked about the problems that need to be corrected in that church. And it's really important that as we bring forth correction to people, that, that people really know that we care about them, that we love them, whether it's a friend, family member, someone that works for us, and we have to, you know, correct them. You know, we just uh, make sure that we've got a good relationship going on there. People <clears throat> know that we care about them. And then... If correction needs to be done, then we can, of course, speak the truth in love, as the Bible says. And people will listen because they know that you love them. And uh, that's the, just the best way to correct somebody. And so he says, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Well, that verse is just full of unity that Paul says, you know, uh, that there would be no divisions among you 
and that you all would just be, you know, on the same page with each other, flowing together in that unity. So, first of all, Paul says um, that you, that there would be no divisions. <clears throat> and that word means, uh, it's schisma, where we get, you know, like schisms, or things that come, walls that are built up in between people. So, there was this uh, whole um, people not getting along in the Corinthian church. Yes, it happens even in churches. Now, for the the Corinthians, they were carnal. They were like spiritual uh, infants. They should be mature by now. And we talked uh, recently about it's okay to be a baby Christian, but it's not okay to be a Christian baby. And that's where you never grow up. Uh, you're still on the milk. You're not on the meat of God's word and still behaving like a baby, you should be mature by now. That's what Paul is going to be saying later on in Corinthians, especially chapter 3. So let there be no divisions among you. You know, it's just such a beautiful thing for people to get along. You know, it says in Psalm 133, verse 1, uh, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You know, harmony amongst people is something that we all want to achieve. And when we have it, when we all get along, it just makes for such a wonderful quality of life. And uh, we know that such a big part of life is being with people. And we have to be with people. That's what society is all about. And God wants us to learn lessons uh, through our interaction with people. And not just to love those people that love us and we get along with, but even the difficult people, there's something to learn. And even when believers, relationships kind of break down over something personal, or in this case, doctrinal or personality-wise, then, um, you know, we're to just overcome that and to have the, the unity and the peace of the Lord that comes through that. So, I love this story, uh, this little quote here. It says, to dwell above with saints we love, that will be glory. To dwell below with saints we know, now that's another story. And so, it's almost like that, um, you know, in Peanuts where it says, uh, you know, life would just be so great um, if we just didn't have uh, people in it. And that's where a lot of the trouble comes from, uh, is when we are, you know, banging, running into people, and, uh, you know, we get upset, something happened, and then our quality of life goes down. It's a big source of our, of our trouble in life, and our concerns, and our worries, um, is those, uh, that sense of disunity when we feel it amongst uh, each other. Now, in this case, um, you know, in the church, you kind of expect more from believers, right? But it still happens. Now, Paul says that you be perfectly joined together. Wow. And um, that means to mend what has been broken. It actually means the setting of a bone that was broken or out of joint. So, you know, stuff happens between people and even amongst fellow believers. So it's like a bone is broken. And it says here that uh, the Apostle Paul is saying, I want you to be perfectly joined together. I want you to mend that broken bone that's out of joint and uh, put it back together. So that is so, so good. And here's some scriptures about unity and getting along Ephesians 4, 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And that means to endeavor. Sometimes uh, a couple reactions. Number one is when people um, hurt us, we want to lash back out at them. And other times we give them the cold shoulder. You know, we, we do the avoidance thing. Um, but the Bible says to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. It's like, you know, we've got to read that. That love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, 
Remember how we sang recently the, the song Charity, Love? If I don't have charity, if love doesn't flow from me, I am nothing. And so it takes work. Again, that's from Ephesians 4, 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. You know, good relationships are hard work, and it starts in the family, you know, working on your your relationship with your family members, if you're married, you know, husband and wife, and with your kids, and and with your brothers and sisters, and, and uh, you know, with your parents, uh, and so forth. Uh, and then we go into the body of Christ, and and so forth. You know, we just endeavor. It's like, ooh, you know, I kind of maybe want to sit on the other side of the, the church, because this person um, kind of just rubs me the wrong way, or or whatever, maybe talks too much and dominates my time, or or whatever it might be. And the Bible says, no, you got to go over there, and during greeting time, you know, go over there and greet them warmly. Endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. It always feels good to, to give that right hand of fellowship and to do your best. Another good scripture is Romans 15, 5. Now, May the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus. It says like-minded. It doesn't mean to have the same mind as far as all your opinions uh, are the same. No, you have, everybody's got different opinions on things, but that you become like-minded, which means, you know, I, I can see what that person is, is saying, what they're thinking. I might not agree with them. It might be a, a, a doctrinal issue. It might be a personal issue. Um, it might be a political uh, issue. And you just go, oh, okay. But, you know, you don't have to, like, go back at them and get in their face and say, oh, that's so wrong. You shouldn't, you know, think that. You shouldn't feel that way or whatever. But to be like-minded um, means that we're just, you know, we respect each other and each other's opinions, even though we don't agree, and we handle each other, you know, carefully. Philippians 2.2, 2, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. And so, uh, be like-minded, have the same love. I remember there was this brother in the Lord who um, I ran into at Home Depot, and, um, you know, he was a guy that didn't believe in the rapture, but that we were going through the tribulation. And we were just talking about the Lord. And, and uh, next thing you know, this topic came up about exactly when is Jesus coming back. I believe he's, he's coming back before the tribulation. I believe in the rapture. So you can call a person like me a, <clears throat> a pre-tribulationalist or a pre-trib, a pre-tribber. <laughs> Um, I believe that Jesus will come uh, before the seven-year tribulation. This guy felt like the believers were going into the uh, tribulation and, um, you know, Christ will come after the tribulation. And I totally disagreed. And I think I had just taught, if I remember, I had just taught like a in a seminar about end times and about the rapture and how Christians are going to be raptured before and lo and behold, here I am at Home Depot, and we're starting to, like, get into the topic. And I felt it kind of, like, amping up a little bit. And you know how you feel. It's like, oh, this is this is going to take forever. Um, I think we need to disagree agreeably. So um, I just started backing off a little bit and kind of changing this subject and asking about him and his, his family and his personal life. And so that was really cool. It de-escalated. And we ended up just greeting each other warmly, um, you know, saying goodbye, uh, parting from one another. And so this is what we have to do. Uh, we have to be like-minded. It's like, hmm, you know, that's not a, we don't need to major in the minors. That is a secondary doctrine. The main doctrines we want to contend for, uh, such as the deity of Christ and the Trinity, inspiration of Scripture, and... Uh, uh, the death and resurrection of Christ and so forth. We don't want to waver from that. But these secondary uh, issues, the outer ring of our doctrinal opinions, you know, we just have to let people have their uh, their opinions. They could be a Seventh-day Adventist 
and um, you know they believe you worship on Saturday, and that argument can go on forever. It's just like you know, like Paul said, if they want to worship on on another day, that's fine. I'm going to worship on the day that I feel, which is Sunday. You know, the Lord's Day. That's what I call it. You know, that's what the Bible calls it. But who cares? You know, what day we worship? Let's just maintain that unity. It's just sad throughout church history. There's been so much disunity, so much division, um, and it's been a real uh, blight upon, you know, Christianity and the name of Christ and his doctrine, his love, uh, because of Christians not getting along. So, um, again, being like-minded doesn't mean you have to believe the same thing, but you respect uh, each other and you respect each other's opinion, and then, um, you know, you don't try to uh, contend back with people and always have to be right or correct people. You just let people, you know, believe and think uh, how they want. You know, uh, love uh, will just really be that bond of perfection. And that's what we want. That's what we want. We don't, don't always have to correct um, people. And so it says to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. And then verse 11 for it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, <clears throat> that there are contentions among you. And so uh, there's contentions mean strife and, and wrangling. And it's just one of the devil's main thing is to get Christians divided. You know, if Satan can't um, come from the outside with his persecution and, and make destruction upon the church, he's going to join the church and come on the inside and get Christians to argue and to dispute. And uh, there's been silly things in the past about people who can't agree on what uh, color the carpet of the chapel should be, and, and they'll just, you know, split and go down the street and go to another church, you know, over that. <clears throat> and it's just so silly. Uh, the Bible says that um, we need to strive hard for, for unity. And uh, one of the seven things that the Lord hates, Proverbs chapter 6, is to sow discord amongst brethren. And that's the next level where we have not only personal disagreement, but now we pull people's, you know, uh, shirt sleeve uh, and we pull them aside and say, you know, did you hear about so-and-so? And and I don't agree with them and, and um, you know, that kind of thing. And we really need to pray for them, you know, kind of thing. Well, that's just a, a religious covering for gossip, isn't it? We have to be careful. The Bible says to speak evil of no man, even though you want to. It's just like you just let that go and you pray for that person. You love them. God has put them into your life as sandpaper to smooth off the, the rough edges and so it's going to be in every Christian experience, in every church that we join. You know, at first we get um, kind of like that infatuation over our, our the new church we found. And it's like, oh, everybody's so great, and the pastor and the pastor's wife and family. But then as time goes on, you know, you might be joining a, a ministry. Let's, let's say you become a Sunday school teacher and the other teacher wants to do it this way. And you're saying, no, we should do it this way. This is the way I've always done it. And, you know, it's like, well, the Bible says to be willing to yield. Don't make such a big deal about it. Um, you know, if, if the person's kind of headstrong, let him be headstrong. Just you yourself be humble. <clears throat> and maybe they'll come along to your way of thinking in the future. Uh, but because maybe they're more strong-willed and, and all, but, but praise God, you backed off and you just said, well, whatever, it's not, a, it's not a big deal, you know, what we do here in this Sunday school classroom uh, with such a small little, little uh, subject here. So, you know, you just let that go and you learn to uh, love one another and make room for each other's uh, weirdness and, uh, you know, quirks and all kinds of things. And knowing that God has given you that ministry. They say that uh, one of the main reasons why missionaries come home from the mission field is not lack of support, not the toughness 
uh, or even the spiritual battle that's going on over there. But it's not getting along with fellow missionaries. Yeah. And they've had to move on to other places or they come home off the mission field. It's the saddest thing ever. So we really want to work on that unity. And, um, you know, it's just Satan's way of creeping in. We have to, to watch out for that. And when we see that potential for, for division and, and strife and disharmony, we know what to do. We know how to pray and we know how to unconditionally love others and to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace and um, to have that agape love which makes room for people's faults. All Listen, all for the cause of Christ. We give up a lot of our personal um, you know, things uh, all for the cause of Christ. It's not that we're letting people trample over us. We're just humble. The Bible says to be humble and to don't let that foot of pride come up in your life and affect your relationship. You know, we have to just learn to, to let those things go and to know that the Lord will defend us. Uh, if we're right, we're right. If, 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 we're, if people don't think we're right, then, you know, let them think that way. And just, again, be humble and don't press for dominance. Don't uh, press for uh, having to be, to be right and having your own way. You know, that's never uh, a, a real good formula for any relationship to get along, right? When people say it's my way or the highway, they might not say it, but if that's how they act, it's like, you know what? This person is a control freak. This person's a dominator. This person's the trying to be the alpha dog uh, in the situation or in the relationship here. Then it's like, you know what? Just You just let them. And the Lord's going to teach them. And maybe through your love and your humility, uh, then um, they will, will come around. And because you can never be, be happy when you always want your own way. So Paul said, that there's a more excellent way, and that is to choose love and that humility. So it's always the best way uh, to live. Of course, we have to put down our, our pride, don't we? Uh, because we get hurt so easily. Um, you know, we're so super sensitive to uh, people and what they say because we're probably just so insecure, but if our security is in Christ, it doesn't matter what people say or do, or we don't worry about having a hair out of place because it's like, you know what? I am who I am. The Lord loves me. He made me who I am. I'm not perfect, but, um, you know, I'm progressing and, um, you know, I'm coming along. So, you know, praise the Lord. So these are some of the keys that uh, go towards the unity and the better quality of life that we can have because disharmony, again, is so depressing. It's so sad. You know, this is the stuff that we, we take home with us that, you know, we can toss and turn uh, with and wake up and think about because of, uh, you know, that, uh, that horrible feeling of not being able to get along with somebody else. So, verse 12, Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul. I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. <clears throat> now, these believers were choosing the personalities of the different teachers, uh, and it, they were felt really like proud to be in that, uh, that camp, so to speak. So you have four here, right? You have four leaders. I am of Paul. <clears throat> He's the apostle of the, to the Gentiles. I am of Apollos. He was that great orator that had <clears throat> had a great influence on the Corinthian church here. So he was very gifted and people loved how the way he taught the scriptures. The Bible says he was very good, very effective in his teaching. Uh, some say, I am of Cephas. <clears throat> of course, that would be Peter, uh, the leader of the Christian church there, who had the keys of the kingdom that Jesus gave him, the apostle uh, predominantly to the, the Jewish people, or some saying, you know, I'm of Christ. And you might say, well, that's cool. I want to be in that camp. Yeah, but they were saying, they were using that as like, I'm super spiritual. And, um, you know, I don't, 
really have a pastor or, or a leader. I, I choose Christ only. And so all, all these four different groups um, were, were using their, uh, the personalities of their teachers, and they felt so proud to be of that particular uh, person and, and style and persuasion. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking right now, we're thinking the same thing, that this is the way it is sometimes with our different denominations and, and how churches have split from one another because, you know, it's, it's got to be, you know, this, this person or it's got to be this way. And it's so crazy because this is when there is that, that division. And Paul's is putting it down right now. He's, he's bringing them around to uh, the humility, saying, you guys, stop it. You know, it's just uh, like kids in a preschool arguing over a toy. Mine. No, it's mine. Mine. No, it's mine. And the preschool teacher's got to go over there and settle that dispute. This is how Christians can be. It's so idiotic. And it's so chaotic as well. It's what the devil uses when we get ourselves in there. And we really, again, we learn the love of Christ by joining the body of Christ. When the whole honeymoon uh, goes away, just like in a marriage, and we find out each other's faults in the church, in the body of Christ, in that particular ministry, it could be a mission group, it could be a church or or a, a choir or or whatever it might be, uh, then it's just what the enemy wants is for us to just glare at everybody's faults. See my eyes? I'm just glaring like, oh, that person, you know, and, you know, oh, man, if they just uh, would cool it and if I could just, um, you know, show them the way, you know, this would be, it would be a lot better around here. You know, that's pride. And that's being judgmental. Jesus said, don't be proud. Don't be judging one another. Take the log out of your own eye uh, to see clearly, um, you know, uh, the faults of others. Love people. Um, you know, be their, be their advocate. And uh, don't separate yourself. Put yourself up through your own pride and arrogance uh, that you know better and, and could run things better, you know. That is so not of the Lord. It's baby land. It's not the church. It's baby land. And it's carnality. It's worldliness that needs to go. This is what Paul is saying. And then he says in verse 13, Is Christ divided? No. Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So, brothers and sisters, this is how I see it. It's like the old phrase, Viva la difference. You know, the old French term, Viva la difference. Let's just uh, celebrate difference amongst us. Now, there are, are benefits of diversity. God gave these teachers. God gave Paul, Apollos, and Cephas as examples to the Corinthians and so forth. We have so many wonderful Bible teachers, and we can become so attached to them. You know, and we can, you know, always talk about them. And it's great to have our our favorites and so forth and so on. Our podcasters and pastors on on the radio or TV or the, uh, the Internet, the podcast and so forth. But you know what? Let's just not worship them. Let's not put them on a pedestal and think that they're any better. There are all types of teachers in the body of Christ. And God has raised them up because not everyone can relate to that pastor. And you might say, well, I do. And someone would be crazy if they would hear this pastor and then switch to another radio station. I mean, I listen to this person each and every day. Well, that's great. That, that pastor relates to you. But that pastor might not relate to somebody else. And so we just need to get that because... God made us all different in the body of Christ. Amen? Now, there are some people like more of the scholarly approach. And they'll, they'll go like, man, I just love John MacArthur. Oh, I listen to him each and every day. And that's, that's great. Another person says, well, I don't really listen to him. But, you know, I like uh, Jack Hibbs, you know, because he really talks about the political things and, and uh, that kind of thing. And someone else says, no, um, 
I don't, I'm not really into politics. You know, I like uh, Chuck Smith. Uh, Chuck Smith's my, my guy, you know, my pastor. And it's like, oh, that's good. But, uh, and other people will just go, oh, I'm really into end times. And I, I like those guys that are on, you know, Christian uh, radio stations and all that talk about Israel and the end times and, and uh, current events and things like that. And other people are like, no, I, I don't, I don't like all that stuff. I, I like, I like, uh, you know, just a straight Bible teaching. I like J. Vernon McGee, you know, he's just straight Bible talking guy. And um, that's, that's whom I'm, I'm into. Well, brothers and sisters, let's celebrate diversity. Amen. I have a thing on that. And one of my favorites is, um, um, you know, let's say it's lunchtime and maybe you skip breakfast. You've had a long morning and you're really hungry and you don't want to start getting hangry, right? You know, hungry and angry at the same time. So you get in your car and you go down and you, uh, th you when you're driving, you're thinking, what am I in the mood for? You know, should I get like a, a Chipotle burrito or I haven't had a Carl's Star hamburger in a long time. Or maybe I want a Whopper from Burger King, you know. Um, and somebody else is like, no, I could really go for some finger licking good uh, KFC right now. Um, so, so you go down and it's like, oh man, you're, you're at the, <coughs> excuse me, you're at the red light. And it's like, I got to decide. I only have so much time for lunch. And all of a sudden it hits you. Oh, I'm going to go there today. But tomorrow or next week, you're going to be going over there. So my point is the Christian churches, people say, and, and many times it can be a, a bad example for the, the Christians. And it's been this way all throughout church history. People say, why don't you guys get along? Why are there so many denominations? Well, I like to take a positive spin and say, isn't it great that when you're hungry, that you can go downtown and get, you know, a multitude of choices to, to pick from. And you're never going to eat the same thing, you know, all the time. You know, you just, you have your go-to, but sometimes you go over here. And it's the same way in the body of Christ. You know, God has raised up different Bible-believing churches. Some are are wonderful, long-standing uh, denominations, and uh, others are more independent churches. A lot of us like the Calvary chapels. Others say, no, I like more of the Pentecostal, you know, charismatic, you know, the pastor just stomps his feet and raises his voice and the spirit comes down during worship, you know, um, or I like a choir. Um, praise bands are okay, but I really like a good choir, you know, um, and it's like, okay, well, Whatever floats your boat, whatever way that you think that, that God can speak to you, that's the church you want to go to. Don't stay at any church and complain about the pastor or the pastor's wife or the praise band or how the children's ministry is being uh, you know, run or it's too cold in the sanctuary. You know, I always have to bring my, my jacket in there. I feel like an ice cube every time. It's like, okay, really, you know, it's such small little things. Um, if you don't like that church, then please go to another church. Amen. Find the pastor you like. Find the music you like. There's so much variety. Viva la difference. You know, and, uh, and but re just remember that when you go there and you settle in, don't say, I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. I am of Cephas. I am of Christ. Say, you know what, um, we're all different, but we're all the same. It's like one big house with different rooms, right? That's the way I like to see it. One big house, a mansion, multi-room, you know? And then you have your different denominations and, and so forth within there. But one of these days when we're in heaven, all those walls are just going to be lifted and taken away. And we're all going to be together, not just in our little groups, but we're all going to be co-mingling together. None of that stuff will, will be there. The walls, the barriers, our personal taste, our likes and our dislikes. We're going to be perfectly 
uh, you know, in our, in our new bodies, we're going to have perfect love for one another. Isn't that great? You know, no more of this uh, petty little stuff that Christians can, can get into. We just got to drop that, man. So listen to this. Here's, here's another point. The closer we get to that on earth, the more closer to heaven we will be, even without being in heaven. Amen? Do I get an amen to that? And so that's what we want to strive for. Good Bible study tonight, isn't it? And it's something that we need to be uh, reminded of because, again, uh, we can get our feelings hurt so easy. And, um, you know, it's just really good to, to really love and, and uh, respect one another. All right. Now, verse 14, I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. Lest anyone should say that I had baptized in my own name. So Paul didn't, um, you know, develop followers by saying, oh, I baptize all of these and, and, and all. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. And so Paul was very focused on his ministry. And this is what we have to be uh, focused on as well. If God calls you to something, don't get sidetracked. You might have multi-interests in your life. Um, Paul baptized, but he was called to evangelize. And he had other people... Uh, baptized. It says in John 4 verse 2, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples. And so, um, you know, to keep the main thing, the main thing. When we serve the Lord, we might have multi-interest and maybe we're more of the joiner type and we, we just say yes to everything and and uh, we, we love, you know, uh, doing things. And it's okay to have side little projects and things like that, but Ask yourself, what is the main thing the Lord has called you to? And then devote yourself to that. And don't get sidetracked by the other things. Like, well, maybe maybe I should be doing this. Or maybe God wants me, you know, I'm called to that. Maybe that's my, my identity. Don't worry about your identity. You know, just love Jesus and he will show you your ministry. And then you'll just, you'll dig that. You know, you'll just be like, well, I'm so... Why am I so fulfilled in life? You know, I just, I love what I'm doing for the Lord. It's because that's what God has called you to, and you're not getting sidetracked into something else. And so just to keep that focus, that's what Paul did, and that's really good uh, for us to, uh, to do as well. So we're going to stop right there. It's just such a good study. I love that. I hate to leave us, but, you know, um, we just keep going on to the different things in, in God's Word as we're pushing our way sell ourselves through um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to go back to the comments before we pray. And uh, Kenny says, hi everybody. Hey brother Kenny, good to see you. And uh, Romina says, choose love and live peaceful life. Amen, Romina. And uh, this is what, what we do. And then uh, Donna is saying amen to uh, to the whole the whole theme here. So, Father, we just pray right now that you would help us, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful yet challenging Bible study that you have uh, given us, Lord, right here in your word in 1 Corinthians. Bless it to our hearts, Lord. Teach us how to love. Teach us how to show respect towards one another. Help us to get ourselves out of our relationship, Lord. And show us how to really, you know, uh, get along with people. Um, we pray, Lord, that you'd help us with any personal uh, feelings that and hurts and things that might come up, Lord. That we would choose to love, choose to forgive. And, um, Lord, we pray that our relationships will become even better through the uh, disagreements that we have had, Lord. That, that we'll just, you know, be stronger like a like a broken bone, 
the bone becomes even stronger because of the hurt and the pain. We pray that for our relationships, Lord, for the sake of Christ, unity, Lord, for your glory, and that we might advance in the cause of Christ without any hindrance uh, because of these uh, divisions, Lord, that we can be so prone to. We thank you, Lord, and fill us now with your love, your agape love, which is the bond of all perfection. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's sing one more song. Love one another, for love is of God. He who loves is born of God and knoweth God. He who does not love does not. bless you and keep you. May you just have a wonderful, wonderful week in the Lord. May the Lord just do something special and may the Lord just confirm his will to you, to your life. May the Lord manifest his love in so many ways and let you know that you're just right where you need to be and that he's guiding and steering your life and that you don't have to worry about what's ahead what kind of twists and turns that you're experiencing, that God is in control. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your pathways. And so the, may the Lord just provide for you, and may you just have opportunities to share His love, be a witness of how much the Lord loves the sinner, and opportunities to share the gospel and Christ's love, both verbally and in practical ways, all for the sake of Jesus, who's coming so soon. The Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.